What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're doing well today. We're going to be looking at the New Breed EDC Clydesdale. Let's get into it. All right, what we're going to do today with the Clydesdale is we're going to do some profile comparisons, size comparison. We're going to do weight and jump into my thoughts and impressions of the Clydesdale. Let's go ahead and kick it off with a couple of budget knife comparisons. Here it is against the Migron Moyarl. So you can see the Clydesdale is what I would constitute as a medium EDC, good size for carry. And here it is against the Civivi Bull Tusk. You can see a little bit smaller than the Bull Tusk. Let's go ahead and move the Moyarl to the side for just a moment. And we'll go ahead and bring in the Para 3 Lightweight. And as you can see, just a little bit longer blade length, very similar handle length. We'll move that ball tusk out of the way and we'll go ahead and bring out the Spyderco Shaman. You can see the Shaman again is going to be a more full size knife in my <laughs> inventory. It is a more full size knife, whereas the Clydesdale is more medium EDC. All right, let's do profile. I like to do this so you can get an idea of like what is the thickness going to be like in hand and also how is it going to carry in pocket. Very comparable to the Para 3 Lightweight as you can see here. They are even and we'll bring the Moriarl out here as well. And the Moriarl is going to be just a little bit thicker. All right, let's go ahead and grab the scale and check the weight on this. This is an all titanium knife with a steel lock bar side and all titanium hardware and 14C28N blade. And it's coming in at 4.6 ounces. So not bad on the weight whatsoever. We'll go ahead and get the scale out of the way. Put that back in the corner. Get back in your corner. Let's jump into my thoughts and impression on the Clydesdale. All right, the Clydesdale is very interesting. It is manufactured by Kubi. It is a hollow ground modified Warnscliffe blade. It does have a steel liner, all titanium hardware, titanium scales, titanium back clip, back clip. That's a new one, guys. Pocket clip and back spacer. My goodness. As far as ergos are concerned, it's actually very comfortable. It is um, just shy of a full four finger grip. So when I put my hand on here, it really does kind of I hang off the back by just a tiny bit, but it is comfortable. Um, it's hard to explain because they I guess they round. It's not hard to explain. It's very easy to explain. They rounded it right here. So that does make it so it doesn't poke or anything like that. So I'm not hanging on the back out the back here and here. I'm hanging off the back a little bit. It has good thickness, slight contouring to the scales. It has jimping all the way to the halfway point, so it actually works for me. You guys know I have those larger hands, so I appreciate the fact that the jimping comes out to meet where my thumb would land as far as the length is concerned. This thing here is a really nice pinch gripper. They have this little spoon here that they cut out towards the tip. And for those detailed pinch grips, I find that I go way up here, choking up, grab the knife with the thumb and the middle finger, and then bam, right there. All the detail work, super easy to do. But this thing also, because it is that sheep's foot type blade, it does have a nice long flat spot for great power cutting. It does really nicely with those power cuts. Access to the lock bar is very good and lockup is very good. I'm going to show you guys a proper spawn whack test. So there you go. A couple of those. You don't need to do too many. You may be asking yourself, why are you unlocking it? redeploying it and locking it again because the spine whack test is to show you if there were to be an accident where you're holding the knife not paying attention like you should be when you're using a cutting tool and you were to hit something by accident would it close on you it's not to show you that if you're out here and you're batoning on the spine is it going to close on you because a folding knife is not meant to baton you're not meant to hit on the back of the spine of a folding knife you want to, and I'll, I'll demonstrate it one more time, you want to deploy the knife, pinch from behind out of the cutting path, give it a whack, close it, reopen it, and test it one more time. If you don't get it to fail after a couple of attempts of doing it that way, which is really simulating an accidental tapping of the spine while it's open, 
it's not going to close on you. Repeatedly doing it can damage the lock bar, which could cause it to fail. It could also show impact damage so that if it did fail and you try to send it in, they're going to see that you were doing some type of spine whacking because it is a hardened steel lock bar or lock bar insert, and it is really high heat treated steel on the blade. So if they're seeing impact damage, they're going to know what happened. So the real way to test it, two to three, no more, one hit, open, uh, close it, reopen it to let the lock bar settle back into its natural position and test it again. Anyway, that's enough about that. Let's go ahead and kick it down to the table. I do want to talk about uh, the cutting performance. Let's go down to the garage. All right, down in the garage, we have the Clydesdale from New Breed EDC. This is just to demonstrate what the factory edge is all about. There will be a full cut test that comes to the channel and apologies, still waiting for the light to come in. I think it's coming in tomorrow. So this is the factory edge, nice factory edge, no blemishes. It is tearing a little bit right there, but I find with these factory hollow grinds that there's usually just a little bit of a lip from the edge onto the hollow grind. So I don't know if that tear will show up on camera with this low lighting, probably not, but I do feel a little bit of a tear going through the paper, nothing unusual, um, pretty common actually. And I still have some of the single plywood that I used from the Feel Good Jack test that we did the other day. So I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah. I mean, it goes through like a laser beam, guys. That's with the grain, across the grain. Feels really good. And again, I will demonstrate a full on cut test where I run it through the gommet and talk a little bit about how it feels going through the hot spots and everything like that. Um, and I'll actually, I'm gonna add this to the review, but by the time I get to the review, I will also have recorded the full cut test this weekend. So I can talk a little bit about how it feels, if I'm feeling any hot spots, how it did going through the material. Um, let me see. Look like there might have been a little bit of adhesive on there. 14C28N, in case I didn't mention it in the video. Uh, this is the same paper I was cutting on a minute ago. Yeah, not really feeling anything. And again, it's not the full cut test. That'll come later. I just like to demonstrate like really briefly how it does and uh, what it looks like going through the material. So good factory edge. They did a good job. And the hollow ground on it feels sweet going through the material. So let's kick it back up to the desk. All right, we're back up here after those cut tests that we did down in the garage. And as you can see, with this hollow grind and this very, you know, normally thin, I wouldn't say it's like abnormally. It's not, it's not like a, a neutron or the drift L from Quiet Carry where it's just ridiculously thin, but it is a good thin blade stock and it comes down to a very nice thin edge and it's got a very well done hollow ground on it. So cut was no problem. Uh, factory edge from Kubi seemed like it was really well done. The 14C28N went through the cardboard, no issues, and it cut through the paper afterwards with no issues either. 14C28N is a blade steel that's a little bit more affordable and i honestly feel like it punches above um, its price point now i did notice the pocket clip i do wish it was a little bit more chamfered down i do feel a little bit of roughness on the edges here and you can see a little bit of the raw metal kind of coming through um, on that pocket clip you can feel that you can feel that when you're gripping down and it does dig in just a little bit it's not horrible um, it's, it doesn't lead to discomfort while cutting with it, but you really can feel that it's there. And I think part of that is because everything else is so nicely chamfered and knocked down and slightly contoured that it's really, really comfortable. And the chamfering here on the pocket clip itself, I think it just needs a little bit more chamfering around the edge here, especially out here at the nose, not necessarily here, but it, it does have some sharpness to it. So I would probably say on future versions and variants, you know, depending on how well this does and if they do more runs, just just give that feedback to Kubi to kind of knock those down a little bit around those edges, and then it'll just be butter in hand. It's really comfortable, guys. Access to the lock bar is good, and this thing has some seriously smooth action, guys. You want to make sure that you get really close up to the edge here so that the knife is not falling on you, or you need to be quick and getting out of the way and letting it fall. I did take it apart and disassemble everything right when I got it, just to do the disassembly right out the gate i like to do those right away um and it, i couldn't quite get it back to where it didn't have play 
and it was super drop shutty. So this is just a little bit past that, and it does have a little bit of thread locker in there. I let it sit for 48 hours, and it hasn't seemed to back out since. Yeah, still holding strong. Um, so just keep that in mind. I don't know if that's because I have the one with the PVD coating or the one without it. I really like the stone wash that they did on the titanium looks really nice especially in person it looks really well done um, it hides fingerprints and everything like that it comes with the filler tab for the non uh, pocket clip side and it is recessed so it comes with the right hand side filler tab for if you're going to rock this lefty so you can just flip it over uh, you can take the pocket clip flip it over and then get the other filler tab which is in the box right now and put that in there and it'll let the screw recess in there. So I like that attention to detail and that extra touch. That's really nice. Uh, lock bar access is good. I can get in there easily to disengage it regardless of how you like to disengage it. Sorry, those bearings are really good. So when I take the lock bar pressure off completely, it's, it, it's gone. Detent is medium to heavy. I wouldn't say it's heavy, it's far from light though um hard to fail it with the reverse flick and even if i'm not overcoming it the balance with the action is so good I, that when i was tr i'm trying to fail it now like i'm trying to fall out of it but I, there that's what i was trying to show you is like even if you slip out it almost still has enough uh, fluidness in that pivot to go out there and this is still not completely broken in this needs to break in a little bit more and then for me the jimping on here this is nice tight uh, grippy jimping but not of overly aggressive and they took it all the way over the top there which I really do appreciate that they took that over the top so that makes it really nice for opening it And it's just, a, you know, it's if you like to fidget, and not everybody does, a lot of people look at these as tools, rightly so. That's what they're intended for. But if you do flick with your knife, you do fidget with your knives, this one here is very satisfying. I like the sounds. Great sounds, um, and it's just really well done. Coming in at $125, um, this is going to compete with stuff like the Jetstream from Tempest Knives. It's going to compete with like the Growler from Devo Knives. Um, it is going to compete against the Echo or the Pyrite, depending on which one you like. I lean towards the Echo a little bit because ergonomically for me, it's a little bit bigger. So it has a little bit more space for my sized hands, which I really do appreciate. But you're going to get titanium with steel hardware. You can include the titanium pocket clip and you're going to get their ARRPM9 for about 100 bucks. So very competitive. That one's a button lock. The other ones that I mentioned prior to that are going to be more of your frame lock or liner locks. Actually, they're all liner locks. Yeah, they're all liner locks. Apologies. I'm trying to think of anything else that I've had have um, that I can think of. If you guys think of any that are good alternative recommendations to this, just in case this is not your style, leave that in the comments for anyone else that may go down there to check and or comment. I wasn't 100% sure on the styling. Um, I wasn't sure if this was for me, and here's what happened. If you go way back, my Yojimbo 2, I think it's the Yojimbo 2 video, was like that as well. I wanted to check it out. I thought it was interesting that it was a hollow grind. It looked like a really good utility blade shape for power cutting and utility cutting, and that's why I was really interested in this one on top of what you're getting for the money. Like great price point, great offering. Kubi's build quality is really good. So um, all those things had me wanting to check it out. And then when I got it in hand, um, it is a unique style for the blade shape. Like the handle I think is not anything too far out there. Actually it's to me very well thought out. Uh, if you're familiar with the factory scales that come on both the Shaman and uh, the paramilitary para lineup knives, they, they have that hump in there because that is where your hand kind of lands and it for whatever reason, it gives you both somewhere to nestle into or to fall into, but also feels very comfortable. So I think that 
all of that adds to being ergonomically very nice. Like it's very nice to hold in hand while using it for cutting tasks. And the blade shape works great. It works really, really well. Um, I do like it a lot. For me, 14C28N is not the best um, raw material steel out there. And it, it could be that it's a satin finish. But as you can see, you know, it's a fingerprint magnet. So I do actually have some ideas for some mods that I want to do to this one. Now, first, I thought about um, going really, really crazy. But I'm not 100% sold on that. So I'm going to think on it for a couple more days um, or at least sleep on it tonight because <laughs> that may be that I end up in the garage tomorrow to do it. But I, I do want to do a mod to this that I think would be really, really cool. So that'll come in a future video. Let me know if there's anything that I missed on here. Ceramic bearings, they are stamped um, all, like all Kubis, but mostly on budget knives. If there's no tolerances that I feel like are a little bit off with these I, I tend to leave them in there they're very serviceable uh, yeah I do worry about stamped collecting debris a little bit easier uh, over time depending on like if like I cut that cardboard and that denim that you know the fine grains can get up in there and then you know with your lube can kind of gum it up um and I, again i think this is going to continue to break in I, I spent a little less time with this one but with all of the kubi oe knives that i've handled that quality is consistent so i felt comfortable giving that feedback of what i've encountered and experienced and i, I do hang on to it you know for three straight days to to let you know like what am i really getting what am what's what sense am i getting with it um and then i take it downstairs and do some deliberate cuts with it to say you know how does it feel while i'm cutting they're not edge retention tests that will come in the future that'll be like a completely different video um where i kind of run it through like a mini gauntlet just to see what is it going to do let me know if i missed anything that you'd like to know about um before i forget it does have like a grippy edge here but it's not down so that it's not sharp so it's not going to cut on you uh the jack wolf feel good that i got it's really sharp and i didn't realize it but when i was pulling at it it actually started to peel away at some of the skin so i got to take that to the garage and just very fine grain, grain sandpaper with a little bit of lube and just hit it just a little bit to kind of knock that down this doesn't have that at all shout out to everyone out there that likes comments uses the links and is subscribed shout out to my channel members you're going to get that early access for this video and again for channel members i'm starting to give uh, dibs on knives that I sell and I'm giving a little bit of a deeper discount on those knives that I'm selling to channel members so that's something else to take into consideration on top of the early access the emojis at the live chats that you get to use and all of that good stuff I also share I share with everyone whenever I see deals sales stuff coming back in stock so make sure you pay attention to those posts uh, I do that to try to help people out and of course if you use the links same price you would have paid anyway does help the channel a little bit so that I can do stuff for giveaways and then turn things around um, when I'm using my own money to buy stuff to give at a deeper discount because I know that I'm going to get that back because you guys are supporting me in other ways. What I'd like to do for future stuff I'll talk about in the next live as far as for, for members as well so keep that in mind that'll be coming as well. I hope all of you have a fantastic week and until next time guys peace.